In the next section of custom theme development, we're going to focus on part three of creating templates. We'll be working on our single .html template. This template displays individual blog posts. You need it so that you can style and structure how a single post appears. Typically, you'll build it to include a post title, content, metadata, featured images, etc. But you can certainly customize it with other blocks, such as post date, categories, or comments. WordPress will use the single.html template as a generic template for all single post types unless they're specifically overridden by more specific templates. You can think of the single template as a fallback layout that works for many content types. However, it is possible to create multiple templates that will control post types. Here's a few of the single post types that you may need to use in your project. As I mentioned, the single.html is used as a generic single post template. You can create something called single-post.html if you want to be able to customize blog posts separately. This is ideal if you're wanting to customize the look of your blog content without affecting other pages or post types. And finally, you can use single dash, and then you can specify a specific post type. This is commonly used for posts that have different layouts and the post type would be replaced with a category or a tag or some sort of other metadata. We'll be concentrating on the single template in this exercise, but we will visit some of these other ones in additional videos. Let's go into WordPress. And what we're going to be working on now is our single post types. Currently, all of our blog posts are using our index template. So if I go to any of my blog posts, you will see that they are using the index template. This is adding some content that we want to modify. The first thing that is somewhat redundant is that I don't need the title and the featured image since those items are showing up inside of our custom hero. And then the other thing that I'm going to want to do on my recipe pages is I'm going to want to modify the ingredients and the instructions. I would like to format these two sections so that they appear in two columns and I'm going to put a background color so they're easily visible since if someone was coming to cook this particular item, they would probably want to be able to easily identify the ingredients and the instructions. We'll go back to WordPress. We're going to go into our editor and I'm going to go to templates. As you know, we currently just have index and pages. We're going to create a new template. I'll click add template and we're going to click single posts. We'll base our single post off of our existing template that we have because we do want to repurpose our header, our hero and our footer. I'll select this and as you can see, it just brings this content in. Now what we want to do is we want to modify this content. We do want the header, we do want the cover, but this group right here contains a query loop. We do not want to pull in all of the posts because we just want to display the actual content for this particular post. So I'm going to go to query loop and we'll click the three dots and simply delete it. It's going to give me a warning and I'll click delete. And now we have this group right here. We're going to place our content inside of the group. So inside of the group, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to want to bring in the content. I'll select the group and hit the plus sign. Then I'm just going to type forward slash content. The content is going to pull in the page based content. So if we simply save now, and go back to the front end portion of WordPress. This is an example of one of our individual posts. I'm going to refresh and you can see that the featured image and the title disappear. Now that we have that in place, as I mentioned, I want to be able to format these two sections of the page into columns. 
We're not going to be able to fully do this within our template because anything we do in our template becomes fixed and it will populate all of the posts. Because each of our posts is going to have a unique listing of ingredients and instructions, we need to build this so that the content will be able to be modified on each individual post. The best way to approach this is to use a pattern. So I'm going to go back out to the editor. I'll go into the pattern section. And so far, we have not made any patterns. So let's go ahead and add a pattern. I'm going to select this. We'll click Add Pattern. I'm going to call this pattern Recipe Details. And I want to make sure that my pattern is not synced. If the pattern is synced, you will not be able to modify any of the content within the pattern. So we're going to unsync this and I'll click add. Now that I have this here, I'm going to go ahead and build what I want to appear inside of this pattern. We'll go ahead and we'll start off by creating a group. I'm just going to create a basic group. This will prevent the line length from getting too long. Inside of this group, I'm going to create two columns and they'll just have a 50-50 split. I'll open list view to make this a little bit easier to see. Inside the first column, I'm going to add a heading that's going to say ingredients. And then underneath that, I'm just going to make a paragraph and I'll just add some placeholder content. Then we're gonna do something similar in the second column. I'm going to select the first heading and we're going to duplicate it. Then I'll just drag this into my second column and I'm going to do the same thing with this paragraph. I'll duplicate this and I'll drag it into the second column. We'll just change the text. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to style this area. So I'm going to select the columns. We're going to change the background color. So I'll go to styles and for the background color, I'm going to use a lighter hue of this green. So I'm going to select this green. We'll click on the color picker and we'll just get a really light hue based off of this green. So I have like a mint color here. Let's also add a little bit of formatting. So with the main column element selected, I'm going to add a gutter spacing. We'll specify this to be medium. This is going to create spacing in between our columns. Then I'll select the individual columns themselves. We're gonna go into styles and I'm going to add padding on the right side of the first column. I'm going to make this one rem, and then I'll select the second column, and we're going to add padding on the left-hand side of one rem as well. And just for good measure, let's add a little bit of padding to the overarching container for the top and the bottom. I don't want the spacing to be too tight, so I'm going to make this medium as well. Finally, I'm going to make sure that the overarching column is selected. We'll go to the settings area and we're going to go into advanced and apply a custom class. We're going to call this recipe details. Then I'm going to select each of the unique columns and we're going to give them a class as well. So the first one can be ingredients and the second column that I have right here can have a class of instructions. This will allow me to hook these elements so that I can apply my own unique CSS. I'm going to save this pattern. And in order to add this into our posts, we need to go to the individual posts. So I'll go into one of my posts. I'm going to click this vibrant bowl and I'll click edit. And as you can see, here are the current instructions and ingredient area. So I'm going to open list view. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we're going to insert a pattern above these two elements. I'll click the plus sign. I'll go to patterns. I'm going to go to my patterns and here's our new pattern. I'm just going to drag this so it appears above the ingredient and instruction area. And now that I have that here, I'm going to go to list view. We'll open up the pattern called recipe details and the two columns. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the list for ingredients and drag it underneath the ingredient heading. We can get rid of this paragraph at this point. And I'll do the same thing for the list of instructions. I'm going to drag this into my second column. 
underneath the heading and I'll delete the placeholder paragraph. And at this point, we don't need the instruction and ingredient headers. So I'm going to delete these. These were the original ones. And now that we have this, let's save the page. Let's go back to the front end and refresh. And as you can see, we now have this area that stands out that contains the ingredients and the instructions. Just to style this a little bit differently, I'm going to put a vertical line in between the two items at large screen. And at small screen, I'm going to use a separator line that is horizontal in between the two elements. Because I've applied my own custom classes to these elements, we can see that here is our recipe details. That's the overarching container. Here's the ingredient div and here's the instruction div. Let's go ahead and add our custom CSS. I'm gonna jump into my code editor. I'll open my style page. And because I want the styles for this to be mobile first, I'm gonna add that rule first. We'll just go down to the bottom of our CSS and I'll make a comment called recipe details. At the small screen, I want to create that horizontal line. I'll target the ingredients and we're gonna add a border bottom. This is gonna be solid, one pixel, and I'm just gonna copy this variable. I want to use my custom teal, which is our darker teal color. Now I'll copy this rule and inside of our media query, which is right here, I'm going to add a rule that removes the border on the bottom at the large screen size. So we'll just go ahead and change this to none. We're gonna add a border on the right. It's gonna be solid one pixel and we'll use that same color of teal. If we save now and go back to the front end portion of WordPress and refresh, it is not working. So let's just take a quick look. Ah, I misspelled recipe details. So recipe is not spelled correctly. Let's just go back out. I'm going to need to change this in two places because my pattern is not synced. If I make a change here, it will not update in the pattern. We'll change it here first. I'm going to save. And now if we refresh, we should see the line, which we do. We're going to also need to add a little bit of padding because the line is too close to the ingredient div. So let's go ahead and just figure out what that value needs to be. I'll just do this in the developer tools so I can get it dialed in. We're going to use padding on the bottom and let's just try two rems. That looks pretty good. So we'll add that in and then let's just check it out at the large screen. You can see here's the large screen we need to remove the border at the bottom there as well. So let's go back into our CSS. At the small screen, I'm gonna add that padding bottom of two rems. And then inside of our media query, we probably need to change this to border bottom style. And then we'll just add important. If we save this and go back to WordPress and refresh, that should remove the border at the bottom at the large screen. And then at the small screen, we only have the border on the bottom and not on the right. Because this is a pattern, we'll want to make that update to the class because we don't want to repeat that problem. So I'm just going to go back out to editor patterns. We'll click our recipe details. I'm going to come into the list view and we'll select the overarching column wrapper and just update the class name. I'll hit save. And at this point, I will need to add this to all of my other posts. There's not an easy way that I can automate this. We're gonna actually have to just go into all of the posts and one by one select them and just add our pattern in. I'll just do this on this one additional page. I'll go to patterns. I'll grab my recipe details. I'm gonna place it right here. And then we'll go into list view and I know you guys already know what we need to do, but I'll open each of the columns. We're gonna go ahead and just grab the list and put it under ingredients. We can ditch this paragraph. We'll grab the list for the instructions and put it under instructions, and then we'll ditch the paragraph there. And then we just need to get rid of 
the instructions and the ingredients. And it looks like for whatever reason in this post, I made these paragraphs. So I'm just going to get rid of those two elements. And if we save now and go back to the front end and I'll just go to my recipe page, this is our smoothie recipe. So I'll click that. And now you can see we have this call out with the ingredients and the instructions. I like this because it just makes this information a little bit easier to visually see and kind of creates a separator. This is only going to exist in the posts that you add it to. If we have other posts on our page, we don't have to worry about those particular posts being affected by this style. The final thing I'm going to add to the bottom of my single template is I'm going to add a navigational element so that users can go to the previous or next recipe. So let's go back into single post. Underneath the content, we're going to add one more element. So I'll come down to this group right here and underneath content, we'll do a add after and we'll create a column here. I'll create 50-50 split columns. In the first column, I'm going to add a previous post. And then in my second column, I'm going to add a next post. We're going to align the next post to the right, like so. And if we save this now and come back to any of our posts and refresh, you can see at the bottom we have next and previous, and we can click this and go into the next post or go back to the previous post. The final thing is that on some of my posts, you can see that my text is not underneath the hero. So what we need to do is we need to select this group, which contains everything. And if we go ahead and open our settings, and if we go to styles, you may have recalled that we added a margin on the top of 30. For these particular pages, we might need to just increase that. I'm going to try 35. We'll click save. And now if we refresh, the content gets pushed down. That looks much better. I'll just go to a couple of my other posts just to make sure that everything's looking the way that I want it. And this feels much better.